I just went through the LAX security line with Marilyn Manson. He had a word that rhymes with duck, scrawled in large letters across the bottom half of his face, with what appeared to be a grease pencil. As we each removed our boots in the security line, he kindly explained that it was not directed at me or anyone else in the airport, but rather at the paparazzi, so that they couldn't see any photos of him that they took. He was really apologetic about it, and covered his mouth around young children, while apologizing to their parents for exposing their child to profanity. Reddit, what weird brief celebrity encounters have you had? That's genius. If you enjoy this video, consider giving it a like and maybe even subscribing. A buddy of mine was having a smoke outside a bar near Detroit, when Bruce Campbell strolls by. It's a little after 1am and he's wearing Ray-Ban shades. One of his friends sheepishly asks, Excuse me, are you Bruce Campbell? Bruce stops, tips his sunglasses, and responds with, Well, someone's gotta be. I met Alan Rickman as he was going into the stage door of the theater for the Broadway show seminar. He was walking past me, and I quickly blurted out, I think you're awesome. He stopped, turned slowly towards me, extended a hand to shake mine, raised one eyebrow, and said, Likewise. It was awesome. Alan Rickman was 100% class, we all miss you buddy. I saw Affix twin on a train to London. I walked up the aisle and said, hey, you're Richard James, right? He replied, yeah, you want a sweet? And proceeded to give me a steak and cheese flavored hard candy. It actually tasted like steak and cheese. WTF. Weird Al. My brother and I were at the airport, and we saw a man walking out of Starbucks who was crouched over with long curly hair. Turns out he was trying not to be seen as it was a busy terminal. We thought he was just some random guy who had Weird Al's hair, and we were bored and immature and decided to ask him if we could take a photo with him, because we thought he looked like Weird Al. Lo and behold, when we said, excuse me, he stood up, and it was freaking Weird Al. We were in shock for a moment, and I told him, we thought you were just someone who looked like Weird Al. To which he replied, oh, well I'm glad I look like myself. I got a photo of him with my brother and he's doing the classic Weird Al face in it. He was very friendly despite obviously trying not to stand out. Lou Diamond Phillips tried to buy weed from me at a pool hall. One of the few times I regretted not being a drug dealer. I was having lunch at a cafe in Culver City with a friend when Nick Swardson walked by our table. I said hey Nick. Can I get a high five? I loved you in grandma's boy. So, he gave me a high five and then asked me if there was room for another at our table. We were both somewhat confused but moved over and made room for him. So he sat down next to us and took a cookie wrapped in cellophane out of his pocket and said hey, do you guys want some of this cookie? I just got it at the counter, it's so good, and proceeded to break us both off a piece. He asked how our day was going, and if we were enjoying our food, then said it was great meeting you guys, I'm going to go get really drunk now, take care and keep being awesome, and walked off. One time I was in a subway, the sandwich place, in Orem, Utah and Jared Butler walks up behind me, I look at him. He smiles at me, and then we both pretend that he isn't himself. I say, you look like Jared Butler, he's one of my favorite actors. He said, I get that a lot, and winks. Then he asks, well, are you a true fan of his? And I say, of course. He asks if I knew what he used to do. I reply with, he used to be a lawyer, before giving that up to pursue acting. And then we spent the next 20 minutes discussing law, politics, and why someone would give up a successful career in law. Then, we shook hands and parted ways. I met Muhammad Ali at the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. By the time my dad and I reached him and the giant crowd of people around him, he was out of pre-signed autograph slips. So he saw me, a 7 year old kid, standing in front of him and decided to pick me up above his head, and he kissed me on the cheek. I get down, and as we are walking away my dad asks if I knew who that was. I said no, and started crying, while my dad started laughing in delight, because his son just met the greatest. Not me, but my dad. A couple months ago, he and his girlfriend decided to take an impromptu weekend trip to Vegas. They are sitting at this bar and notice this guy in a crazy outfit walk in. 
the paparazzi is trailing him, and they get stuck behind a velvet rope near the entrance of the bar. As this guy is trying to sit down, these photographers keep snapping pictures. My dad thought this was pretty rude. He pulled out his phone and started snapping pictures of the paparazzi. They start yelling at him and demanding to know what the hell he thinks he's doing, and he just tells them that if they can take photos of someone who doesn't want it, then he can take photos of them. After a couple minutes, a bodyguard from the guy's table approaches my dad and his girlfriend. My dad figures that they are too close and starts saying, sorry, we'll move down a bit, but the bodyguard interrupts him and says, no sir, Mr. Rodman would like to know if you would join his table. They walk over, and to their surprise, it's Dennis Rodman. He thanked my dad for what he did, and told him how it was one of the funnier reactions he'd ever seen to the photographers. He bought them a couple drinks, and they sat, and talked for a while, apparently he kept saying my dad was a funny guy, granted, my dad has a pretty decent, if dorky, sense of humor and jokes pretty much constantly. Eventually my dad said they'd go back to the bar and leave him alone for a bit, he thanked them again. After another few minutes, the bartender brings over a bottle of champagne and opens it for them. My dad, being a wine lover, recognizes it as a bottle that runs several hundred dollars and stops the bartender in a panic, assuming he'd misheard their order. The bartender said it was taken care of, at which point Dennis Rodman taps my dad on the shoulder, says, enjoy it, and walks out. I worked as a Santa's helper at Scottsdale Fashion Square back in the early double O's. Very fun and awesome job, but that is another story. One night around 15 minutes before the mall closed, we started to close up early, because we had no one in line. A really tall guy walked up with a woman and a little boy. While my head was under the counter getting some items for restocking, the man asked politely if we were still open, and if it was okay for them to get a photo with Santa. I said yep, Santa is ready for you when you are. Once I was done with whatever I was doing under the counter, I walked toward the camera and said alright everyone, look right here at the camera and say. It was at this point I saw that the man was Vince Vaughn. Holy crap Vince Vaughn. I was shocked and thought I'd get canned. After an unbearable silence, Santa, Vince, and the woman said, in unison, holy crap Vince Vaughn. We had a hearty laugh, and he let us print out an extra copy of his photo, and signed it for us. I used to live in the East Village about a block from Willem Dafoe. I would see him around the neighborhood a lot, enough times that we would nod to one another in greeting as we passed on the sidewalk. One day I walked into our corner convenience store and I completely spaced about why I came in there. I stood just inside the door trying to remember what I came for. When I hear the bell on the door jingle, and I turn around, and see Willem Dafoe standing behind me. It was a small store, and he thought I was standing in line at the counter, so I politely told him to go ahead of me, because I have no idea what I needed. He steps in front of me, stops, and says, damn it, now I can't remember either. After a few seconds he snaps his fingers, reaches up on shelf and pulls down about 5 packs of condoms, and giddily throws them on the clerk's counter. I told him I just remembered that I only came in for some dishwashing liquid, got it from another shelf, and stood behind him to pay. After he pays, on his way out the door he turns around to me and says, it's gonna be a big night. I wish I could tell this story more often. I was a patient in a behavioral health care facility, doing a puzzle, when I heard the patient say that Steven Tyler, he was getting treatments for painkiller addiction at the time. Decked out leather jacket, huge mouth, hair, entourage, everything. He was about at the lobby ready to leave, so I had to think fast. I had my acoustic guitar while I was in the hospital, so I asked him, playing dumb, are you a musician? You look like one. He said, yes, I am. I asked him, would you like to play my guitar? He looked at what might have been his agent, who gestured at her watch, but said, I have five minutes, alright. We sat down in the lobby, where the patients got their vitals, I got my guitar from the nurse's office, and he proceeded to tune my guitar to something open and ridiculous like D.A.D.A. A.D. He sang a new song about rain, purple rain, and washing things. Since I beatboxed, I laid down some drums while he played. Afterwards, he said to me kindly, that's the first time I've played music sober in two years. Thank you. 
I've mentioned this before as the nicest celebrity I ever met. As a result of my literally bumping into the husband of my mom's old co-worker while taking the NBC Studios tour in LA, my mom and I got invited by him to go backstage of The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, where he worked as a writer. We were carefully instructed about the house rules, including not looking at Mr. Carson as he passed by, stay in this area, etc. They had a comedian warming up the crowd and I started to get bored and moseyed around a little bit. I made eye contact a couple of times with an older hippie dude, chain smoking, eyes shifting nervously, ponytail, mumbling. Being 12 or so I didn't have any red flags go up, so when he looked at me again and nodded, I said, hello. He was actually very nice. He said he was going to be going out on stage as Johnny's guest, and he was really nervous, because it's been a long time since he had been in front of a crowd. I asked if he used to be better, and he said yes, but he was younger then, and it was much harder to please the younger generation. We paused as Ed Mark Marlon announced Johnny and he did his monologue, then talked a little more as they headed to commercial. Then he said he needed to take a few minutes to pump himself up, gather his courage, and again said he was really nervous, and I should wish him luck. I did, and he shook my hand. I looked back and there was my mom, eyes wide open, with a look that I took, as terror. Her jaw was shaking a bit, hand over her mouth, eyes like saucers. I suddenly got really nervous, like I was just talking to Charles Manson or something. It occurred to me, that I never even asked his name. As I walked away from him, my mom grabs me by the shoulders and said, Do you know who that was? That was Ringo Starr. While I knew the Beatles music, and heard of John Lennon, I wasn't familiar with their names, so I turned back, to look at him and said, way too loudly, who's Ringo Starr? Ringo turned, looked at me, his shoulders slumped a bit, and he took, a really really long drag of his smoke, before stepping it out. I will never forget the what the f am I doing here? Look on his face for a brief moment, before he plastered on a smile, and got ready to be announced. I've always wished I had an opportunity to apologize for that. He was there to announce and promote the first incarnation of his all-star band. Once the crowd went nuts cheering for him, you could see the nerves instantly melt away, and he did great, but I still feel bad. Most of these stories made me feel really fussy inside, I hope it was the same for you all. Thank you for watching.